Now on to the second part of the OOP question. The first part, as you remember, the first two videos, we created the object for just one of these print orders, just one of those. So now we're going to use the main program to work with this entire text file and with all of the orders. So remember, main part is for all of the text file handling and for working with all of the orders. The class was just to handle one specific order. So we've done that and hopefully we can test to see if our code was correct and that everything's going to work okay. There's only th three or four little questions, or biggish questions that we got for the second part. So let's do question 2.2.1. We must create an array that will be able to hold 3,000 of those print objects. So let's go. Now remember there's our class that we created. We're going to go to the main program over here. So here I'm going to create an array. Now obviously we're going to use it in multiple buttons and that. So I'm going to create it globally. So I'm going to create my array and we're going to call it array order prints. Do they give us a name of what we must call it? Array order prints, that's correct. Array order prints. And that is an array that can store, we said 3,000 if I remember, 30,000, 30,000. And now they can store of that object, which is a T order object. Okay, T order object. Not T order object, sorry, T order print. Which is that class, T order print. Now before I can actually do that, it actually says, what is this T order print? If I actually run it, it should actually say, what is a T order print? It doesn't know what it is. Because we actually haven't told this u this uh, program to be able to use that class. So I must come to the top here and I must give it the name that is specified for a T order print. So over here I must use the class CLS order print unit. So now if I run it, hopefully it doesn't give me that error. There we go. So now it knows, and now we can use all those functions that we had on a T order print. So now I've got my T order print. Now it's also prob they're probably telling us to use some sort of way to rec record how many there are. Um, but we've got to get the values from the text file and on the on activate. Now just a little tip: whenever you're using an array, we're not 100% sure if they're going to be 30,000. So it's nice to have some sort of integer that will tell us how many values are in that array. Okay, so now we need to go to the form. Yeah, we've got our form over here. Well, that's a red output. They've got form report, and we need to go to the on activate over here on activate. So there we are on form activate. So now we're going to write the code that will get the values from that text file and put it into that array that we just declared. So obviously we're going to be extracting all this stuff from each line of the code. So we're going to obviously have some sort of text file handling and for text file handling we obviously need some sort of variable. So we need obviously a text file which I'm going to call f. And we're obviously going to have some sort of s line which is going to be getting values from the text file. And then we're going to have to actually store those values in somewhere. Now they're going to be of the correct type. So remember we need an order num so that's going to be a, a a string. So we will call it, I'm going to call it what? S order num. There's also going to be some sort of, remember what did we say the first one was? You can always just go check at the top here, right at the top here. The print number, remember if you remember the correct. So we come here, that was an integer, so we can have some sort of integer, so I'm going to call it S print num. which is our type integer. There was also a pick quantity, which is also an integer. Pink quantity, not pick quantity, pick. Uh, we need a pick file size. Remember that was a character. So S pick size. It was pick size, yes, and that was of type char. Um, we had the pick file name, which was also a string. And then last but not least, we had the file size, pick file size, which was also integer. Okay, so we got that part. So, first little part, we obviously, um, they didn't mention anything about error checking, so we're not going to stress too much about that. So we can go straight into the normal, uh, we don't have to worry about the file exists, so we can go straight into the normal file handling. 
first step always is assign the file. Okay, so we need to assign the file to the text file. So we've got our text file F, and we're going to assign it to that text file, which as you can see is called ordersprint.txt. Also make sure that that text file is in the same folder as your Delphi code. So it was order prints.txt just to confirm order prints of txt and remember that's a string so I must put that in the, the single quotes okay so we assign the file next part we obviously reset the file so we can go to the very top of the file and we can start reading the data from there then we do our normal while not end of file f do and we obviously can be doing lots of things so I'm gonna say begin and inside here somewhere we're going to say s line is going to equal well not s line sorry we're going to read line from f into the string s line and then we do some string handling there and at the very end we're going to close the file for f Okay, that's your normal text file handling situation. So now that we've read in the file, we obviously need to put those values into the array. So first things first, we've got to extract all those things. And if you look at the string, I'm actually going to write a, a comment here so I can see what they look like. So I can extract it the way I need to. So here we go. So the first part is the order number. Now, if you reread the question correctly, they said that the order number contains the following. Is the order number always going to be that length? Well, it looks like it's always going to be that length, but do not be sure we can use this position of the comma to help us here. So let's go. We can obviously have some sort of variable that's going to find the position of the comma. So the comma integer will be the position of the comma in my S line and it will give me the first commas position in this case it will be that one over there so now we are going to say order num S order num because it's a string is going to be copying from S line starting at position 1 till the position of the comma minus 1 remember minus 1 because you don't want to go including the comma you just want to go up to the minus 1 so hopefully that should work and then once we're finished with that, obviously we don't need that in our S line anymore. So I'm going to delete from S line, starting at 1, till the position of the comma. So it will be gone. Now, all we have to do is do that again. I literally have to copy that again. Because now our string will look like this. That will be gone. So all we do is find that one, that number after. Now remember quantity, or that next part is the print number okay so we're gonna get the print number so we don't know how many characters that will be so we get the position of the comma we're now gonna get the print number so we've got s print num and obviously that is an integer if you remember correctly that's an integer and we are copying so we're gonna obviously get a string when we copy so we're gonna convert the string to an int and all we're doing is exactly the same finding the position of the comma which in this case will be there, copy from 1 till the position of the comma minus 1, so it'll be one character in this case, and then delete up until the comma. And you can literally copy and paste this as you go along. So we're going to paste and do this again. Now we're going to get the quantity. Now this, we definitely do not know if it's going to be 1 or 30, so we don't know how many um, they're going to be, so there's going to be quantity. So in this case, it's going to be pick quantity quantity again a string to int copy from that it's exactly the same see how you can save time if you just copy and paste your code here so our string will then after that delete will look something like that that will be what's left no sorry that's the order number then the print num then the pick quantity so it will be left with that part that's not highlighted will be left so let's go here we're going to paste get the position of the comma in this case we now get in the pick file size code or the code that we get in there which if you remember correctly we stored in fpick size now that's a character 
So we must just make sure we work with characters. Okay, if pick size, which is a char, and I think it'll work okay if we just use it like that. We'll see if there are any errors coming up later. Let's copy. We don't need to copy, we already copied and pasted it. Next one is the pick file name, which is a string. So yeah, we've got pick file name. File name. Now that's a string, so we don't need to use this string to int again in that case. So we just copy and use that. Now once we get to this one, once we get to the second last one, you once we delete the comma, do you agree we will be left only with those four numbers? So I don't need to do the delete of the position of the comma again. I can simply go S, which is the last digit, which is obviously if we double check over here, the last digit is the file size. So if pick file size will just be whatever's left in S line. But remember S line's a string, so we must convert that from an integer to a string. No? Correction. A string to an int. Okay. Now we've extracted all those into different variable names. Okay. So we've got one, two, three pixels. Oops, I've made that in the wrong place. So that was the last step. So I actually forgot about all these others that I put in between. That must go at the end. Because remember, that's the last comma that we get. Okay, now we've extracted all of them. Now all we have to do is put them into the object that we've created, the array. Okay, so remember, the f we don't have any elements in the array at the moment. But we've got an n variable which tells us how many there are. And that initializes to 0. So the first time we run this, we should actually say, you know what? That n, we should increase n because now it will be a 1. So we can put it into position 1 of the array. So now that array order prints position n, which is position 1, must now be the value of of all this data. Now we're going to call the constructor. Now before we can do that, we actually have to call it like this. It's going to equal to t order print dot, and now we call the create function. And now we're going to create it that, that constructor that we used, but now we're going to use the p order num and all that, exactly like we used now. Nah, we've just extracted all those data into these strings and integers which we're going to use here. So s print num. Then it's going to be s pick quantity. Then s pick size. Do you see why it makes life easier if you keep them similar just by changing the first letter a little bit? It makes your life a lot easier. Now s pick file name. And then s pick file size. And if we call that, it should run and all that. It should take all of those and put them in. Let's hope it works. Let's run it. Error over there. What's my error? Chart end. Okay, so that's obviously a problem. What I'm going to do to get around it is I'm actually going to copy and then put a square bracket. Because it's only always going to be one character, I just put those square bracket one around it so that it knows that it's always going to be one character. It should work then, hopefully. There we go. So now we know it's worked, so hopefully. We'll see in the next question how it happens, or what else we can do.